My name is Mac, you're watching Broke Rednecks Prepping. What I'd like to talk to you today about is not necessarily a prepping issue, but about the mass shootings. Most of us as preppers are also gun owners. We're in Texas, a lot of us here are gun owners. Over the last few days, as you know, there have been three major mass shootings everybody's looking at. The Gilroy Garlic Festival in California, the Walmart area around it that was a young man shot up in El Paso, Texas, here in my own state, and the looked like a kind of a bar, restaurant area, entertainment district in Dayton, Ohio. First of all, uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody who was affected by that. The reason I wanted to talk about it is because I'm a gun owner. I'm going to continue to be a gun owner. And <clears throat> as gun owners, and whether you're a prepper or not, we are now going to face some responsibilities in talking about the issue. Folks, I, I, I know all of you who watched the news, your heart had to break seeing, hearing the stories of what it was like to be in the Walmart or uh, outside those restaurants and, and the dead bodies and people being shot. We've all probably heard, seen the CNN reports and heard the gunshots and people screaming. It's, it's a heartbreaking event to see. And what occurred to me in talking to some people today, because I've had three separate people text me saying that we need to ban assault rifles, as an example. Now, of those three people, none could act, well, even effectively define what they considered assault rifles. But they wanted them banned because we live in a world where corporate media and Democrat politicians, you know, throw them under the bus on this one, have convinced them that gun control is going to be a silver bullet. It, it won't be we can look at the history of gun control laws and we don't have to look very far to realize that while they do an effective job stopping mass shootings, mass shootings are merely a type of mass killing and gun control doesn't stop, doesn't lower homicide rates, doesn't lower home invasion, sexual assault, burglary, attempted murder rates. In fact, in some places like London, even since they've banned guns, they've been having quite a few issues with knife attacks. They're homicide rate for 2018 for a good bit of the year was comparable to New York City's for the first time since, oh hell, I mean, Sherlock Holmes was running around, you know. And we as gun owners have to be able to articulate that. Because it's easy to look at a statistic and say, well, Australia banned most guns and there hadn't been a mass shooting since. Fair enough, that sounds great. I mean, ideally, that, that sounds like what needs to happen. We pass a law, can't, you know, fire that silver bullet and the problem's solved. What we don't realize is that the homicide rate didn't drop. I don't just want to see gunshot victims not happen. I mean, understand, the guy who drove the, the truck through the crowd at a Mardi Gras in Marseille a couple years ago, those people getting killed, all 80-something of them, is as reprehensible to me as the people who were shot and killed in El Paso. I don't want to see either happen. <clears throat> and we need to understand, as gun owners, that so many people are going to think that it's the firearm that's the problem. When the, we need to make it clear and be able to calmly explain to people that the firearm is merely the tool. It's not the firearm that did it. I mean, it's the person. If I put an AR-15 on this table, I could leave it here indefinitely. It's not going to shoot anybody on its own. It takes a person to do that. And the people who lack a firearm as a tool will start doing what's happened before and start mimicking other mass killers in other places which is why I mentioned the truck attack in Marseille, France. Because it wasn't long after that that somebody tried the same thing on a jogging trail in Manhattan. <clears throat> that's something that's overlooked and forgotten. In those cases, nobody tried to ban whatever it was, a truck of some sort. He rented it from a hardware store, I forget which one. Nobody would try to ban trucks, that'd be dumb. When, uh, who was it, Tipping Bay blew up the federal building in, in Oklahoma City. Uh, we restricted a little bit of ammonium nitrate, but nobody in their right mind said we can't sell fertilizers anymore. Nobody tried to ban whatever moving truck he had, right, or a U-Haul. Nobody tried to ban that stuff because it was impractical, because we understood you had to blame the person, not the tool. When September 11th happened, nobody said, well, crap, I guess we can't have airplanes anymore. No, we blame the terrorists who did it. And right now, the media and a lot of politicians are telling people that it's not so much the person, it's the gun. And we as law-abiding gun owners need to be able to have facts and statistics and numbers in our head that we can deliver calmly without getting offended 
and trying to convince people that it's our Second Amendment right and we're going to start another revolution and throw tea in the water if they try to take our guns away. We need to be clear, concise, articulate. We also need to show more compassion. Yes, it would have been nice if one of the many concealed carry holders or open carry holders in Texas had shot this guy when he walked in the door of the Walmart. I mean, I hate seeing the headline that he killed nearly 20 people. I'd rather see the headline that dude showed up at a Walmart to shoot people and somebody whacked him in the parking lot. That's preferable to me. But it didn't happen. Who knows why, but it didn't. <clears throat> we need to be able to point out to people that it wasn't the gun, it was the person. And see, that's the other issue that I want to talk to gun owners about right now. See, every time there's a mass shooting, the left is out here going, we need gun control yesterday, right now. We need to ban AR-15s because they're the devil. And we need to ban things that look like the AR-15s. We need to ban military-style stuff. It doesn't even have to carry bullets. If it's black, then it's tactical. We need to get rid of it. On the right, you have them saying mental health, which is probably fairly accurate. Of course, then again, I watched our beloved lieutenant governor on TV talking today about banning certain or about video games being the problem. The right wants to ban, ban anything but guns. And what we've got to do is get better with our organizations, be it the NRA or uh, a couple of the others that a lot of people like to join, about standing on our politicians, left and right, and getting them to actually solve this problem. I've heard Republican politicians talk for years about mental health. I haven't seen a whole lot of bills. Here's a look at you, Mitch McConnell. <clears throat> now, Mitch McConnell has been tweeted at today because somebody wants to pass a background check system. <clears throat> he's not letting it go up. Fine, it's a bad bill. But on the other hand, he's not presenting anything else. The Republican side is just hoping it'll blow over. We have got to get on a Republican and pro-gun politicians to actually come up with some legitimate, honest, and thought-out solutions. Some of it may involve some firearm regulation. Or maybe some of it's proven to work. But a lot of it's going to involve other things because at the end of the day, the gun is just the tool. Mass killings are the problem, not mass shootings. It's just we have a lot more guns in America, so it's easier to get a gun than it is to get a rider truck, I guess, or whatever. <clears throat> and we have got to do a better job explaining to people, our friends, our family, people at the water cooler talk, what the actual issues are. And we have got to make an honest effort to stay on our politicians because eventually, and mark my words on this, there will be one mass shooting too many and when it happens, enough people, too many people who are not raised around guns anymore, are going to keep blaming the guns and they're going to outnumber the law-abiding citizens and they will come and take them. They will ban them. The other thing we need to do be, we need to be better about pointing out. Now, I said the background check law that congressman from Ohio, I forget which one, is, was trying to submit in the Senate and Mitch McConnell shot down was a bad bill. He wants to do universal background checks. So if I decide to sell somebody a gun, you know, just as a private sale, I'd have to run a check. <clears throat> I don't necessarily have a problem with the background check, but this is something we need to be talking to our friends about. There was a shooting outside of San Antonio, and, and I just forgot the town, but it was uh, the guy had been kicked out of the Air Force, dishonorable discharge. He'd been arrested and served over a year, and he was a felon for domestic violence. The church he shot up is where his ex-wife and ex-in-laws went. Now, he was able to buy an AR-15 platform rifle and extendable you know, high-capacity magazines and all that stuff at an academy sports and outdoors because when they ran the background check on him, he came up clean. See, the U.S. Air Force, the federal correction system, nobody bothered to tell the FBI, who runs the background check system, that he wasn't allowed to have a gun. Now, I point that out because why would we add more background checks? He's not unique, by the way. That's not a one-off. Uh, the guy who shot up the Orlando Pulse nightclub in uh, Orlando, he was a security guard who was armed security. Now, he was allowed to have a gun, though I got to do a shout-out to the gun store who didn't sell him one the first time. But the thing is, he'd been required to take a psychological exam as part of his security job, and his security company just forged the paperwork and didn't make him do it. Maybe that would have stopped him, maybe not. But my point is, the systems we have in place are not working properly. They're not working effectively. We don't have to look very far before we can find something that should have stopped these shootings, that should have taken the guns out of bad guys' hands ahead of time. Nicholas Cruz, who uh, shot up the, the school in uh, Florida. Now, in his case, he'd interacted with law enforcement how many times? I'm not gonna pile on the deputy who didn't go in there, or the other deputies who didn't go in there, 
though shout out to Coral Springs who showed up and did go into the school. But the point is, that should not have gotten to the school. He should have, that kid had problems. It should have been dealt with a whole lot further down the line than when it got to it. When it got to, by the time it got to school shooting, he interacted with the police in his area some two dozen times. Something should have happened along the way. And that's something we have also got to get better at articulating to our friends out there of good conscience who don't know a lot about guns and don't understand why we don't want to let them go. We've got to be able to explain this clearly, concisely, with specific facts. So when they say, we need a universal background check, we can say honestly, look, the background check system we have is not working. Putting a new one in at this point wouldn't work. Now if we can fix the system and get all the different states and the military to tell you when somebody's been in prison so we can keep people, so we know it's working every time, or at least most of the time, then all right, fine. Maybe we'll find a way we can expand it, something we can tweak. Right now, there are over 30,000 gun laws on the books, and we don't enforce them. I point out the background check system for simply this reason. It, when people who are a felon or are not legally allowed to buy a gun attempt to buy a gun, they've committed a federal offense. That is a crime. Why don't y'all, just to have some fun with this, take a good look at the statistics on how many of those people are prosecuted? People want new gun laws because they think it's a silver bullet who will stop crime, who will stop these horrible things we're seeing on TV. They don't understand that it's not. At the end of the day, we are going to have to deal with what's making people want to be mass killers whether they want to shoot, whether they want to be a suicide bomber, whether they want to drive a truck into a crowd, it doesn't really matter. The people that they kill are all dead. We've got to figure out what's making them become the killers. We've got to look at that, because if we take one tool away, they'll find another. I don't know why Tim McVeigh didn't use a gun, but he did. <clears throat> but the point is, I've been to the museum in Oklahoma City for that. It was a brutal and horrible scene. And he blew up a federal building, that goes back to the 90s. And until we can get our politicians and we can get some of our non gun owning friends to understand what the issues are, issues that we, we as gun owners can understand, we're not going to have them on our side. Now, my goal is to never see a mass shooting again. I, I do not ever want to turn on Fox News and find out there's an active shooter here, an active shooter there. It's heartbreaking to see what happened in the El Paso Walmart yesterday. Heartbreaking. And even if it's not popular to say, our thoughts and prayers are going out to the people who are suffering from that. But at the same time, we can take that gun out of his hands. He could have made explosives out of things he got at the hardware store. He could have used a truck and killed another group of people somewhere, and probably would have. He was incentivized to do it. We have got to figure out what is indoctrinating these guys to do it. Some of them, we can look at and be like, all right, it's Muslim extremists. So we're going to call them Islamists and be like, oh, they're a terrorist. But Terrorists are still people. This guy apparently was a white separatist or a white supremacist, it's looking like, allegedly. Um, what made him go down that road? What made the guys decide they wanted to be terrorists in San Bernardino or Pulse in Orlando? What made Tim McVeigh want to kill a bunch of people in Oklahoma City that did nothing to him? Until we can convince our politicians to come up with some bills, to do the studies they need to, to figure out why these people, who were once somebody's baby, decided to be mass murderers. No gun control law is going to fix it. Well, we may patch it here and there, but they're going to find another way to do what they do. Guys, and I am speaking to the gun owners here, we have got to present ourselves better. We've got to articulate ourselves better. We've got to be willing to have the discussion with non-gun owners and liberals who want to take our guns and turn them into a big melted chair like the Game of Thrones thing. We've got to understand that they're not snowflakes, they're not stupid, they're not unreasonable. They're being told by a corporate media that these horrible images that are on TV are caused by an inanimate object, and we as gun owners are just being selfish because we want to play Weekend Warrior and not give them up and we don't care how many children die. We do. We need to let them know that. There was a concealed or license to carry holder in El Paso, I don't have the guy's name, but I've read several stories that mention, I think he's also a serviceman, who went into the Walmart in El Paso. He didn't engage the shooter, but he did get some kids out. I don't know the guy's name, but if he's ever in Spur, Texas, I'm buying dinner for him. Just because we're gun owners doesn't mean we don't care about others. We don't lack empathy. Our hearts break too. 
but we need to be able to express that to those around us. All politics are local, they say, and these conversations are going to start at the water cooler level and work its way up. But once we've been able to have those conversations with our friends, we have got to get together in groups, be it the NRA or Gun Owners of America or pick one, and we have got to get on our politicians. Because no matter how many times Republicans blame mental health or video games or the great pumpkin, they're still not making the effort to fix it. The Democrats are guilty for coming up with a BS reasoning that if we just ban this other gun, it will fix it. The Republicans are just as guilty by standing back and going, yeah, that mental health. Now I'm going to go back to my office and do jack crap about it. Guys, if we want to see this stop and we want to keep our, civil, our, our constitutional rights, we're going to have to quit sitting in our chairs at home going, they're not taking my guns, and we're going to have to go to our politicians and say, fix this problem. Find out what is causing these people to go off the rails. Find out workable solutions to fix it, whether it's ergonomic security or armed security or better education or whatever. Find out and fix it. Because if we keep letting our Republican Republican politicians mail this issue in, the Democrats are going to win, and our right to have tools to defend ourselves with is going to disappear. To the liberal people watching this who don't like guns, you probably think I've lost my mind and that guns are the devil and need to go. <clears throat> I, I can see why you think that. I strongly disagree, and I want to have that conversation. So wherever you land on this, on this video, whether you like or dislike, I don't care. Uh, this is a little different. If you want to subscribe so you see more of them, cool. I'll do some response videos that go along. Leave a comment. Let's get a discussion going. And if somebody who's anti-gun throws up a discussion, or throws up a comment, let's not lash out at them. Let's respond reasonably and calmly. Because this problem of mass killings in the U.S., especially the ones using guns, is not going to be solved by us yelling at each other. Our politics have gotten to the point where we're far too mean to each other these days. We don't listen, we don't respect. So even if it's on one lightly subscribed YouTube channel about a guy who makes weird prepping videos and wears baseball jerseys, let's start here and see if we can get a conversation going. I genuinely hope we can. Anyway guys, my name is Matt, this is Broke Rednecks Prepping, and I hope I see you next time. Thank you.